ಪಾಂಚೀಕೃತ ಮಹಾಭೂತ ಸಂಭವ ಕಾಮ ಸಂಚಿತ ಶಾರೀರ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖಾನ ಭೋಗ ಯತ್ನ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಪಾಂಚೀಕೃತಂ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಎಲಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾಭೂತ ಸಂಭವ ಮೇಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೈವ್ ಎಲಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾರ್ಮ ಸಂಚಿತ ಡಿಟರ್ಮನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ ಪ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಶಾರೀರ the gross body sukha dukha nam for enjoyment and suffering bhoga ayatanam medium of experiencing uchate is said the gross body the medium by which the individual experiences enjoyment and suffering is determined by past action and formed out of the five great elements Namaste. So this verse is the beginning of a description of the embodied living being. And of course, the most important thing about the embodied living being besides consciousness is the body. So what is the body? Where does it come from? What are its ingredients? What are its parts? And so on. Now, this is explained in many different scriptures. Not only the Upanishads, but also the Puranas. And the order of creation is given in every one of them exactly the same. First, there is space. And of course, space is emptiness. It's the void. It's nothingness. then god said let there be light so the next one is fire fire can mean anything that glows then out of fire comes air then water then finally earth and in every one of these elements there's so called elements but it doesn't mean the same thing as the western concept of elements chemical elements rather one could think of them as states of matter that earth is solid matter water is all liquid matter air represents gases and fire represents ionized gas gas that is missing electrons and so it has an electrical charge and finally space space is the most important element because without space where are the other elements going to reside in order to have objects you have to have a space to put them in and space is very different from the other elements space is one it cannot be divided any division of space into like inside and outside of a pot for example is only conceptual it's only words but space itself is not divisible nothing sticks to it there's no friction in space actually there's no dimension in space all by itself dimension only comes into it when we have objects and then we can say oh this object has such and such dimensions but space itself is dimensionless infinite unbounded and empty oh it also can't be destroyed or changed by anything so when we have a big space like take for example the sky the sky appears blue but we know actually the sky is not blue that's only due to the scattering of different wavelengths of light by tiny particles in the atmosphere 
So the sky isn't really blue. The sky is colorless, transparent. That's how come we can see even far away stars and galaxies and things like that. Because the atmosphere itself doesn't disturb, doesn't alter the light transmitted from those objects. So in the same way, pure consciousness doesn't color anything. It's completely transparent. Nothing can affect it. And it's really boundless. And so on. The same qualities as space. So what does this mean? Vedanta Sutra says, space is Brahman. Akashastalingat. Akasha, space, is Brahman, for Brahman's indicatory mark is in evidence. Shankaracharya's commentary. By the word Akasha, space, here, we should understand Brahman. Why? Because a mark indicating Brahman is in evidence in for all things originate from space, to be sure, etc. Chandogya Upanishad 191. For it is an established fact in the Upanishads that all things originate from the Supreme Brahman. Now let's take a look at that verse from Chandogya Upanishad. Shalavatya asked, What is the goal of this world? Pravaha Najaivali answered, Space, for all things certainly originate from space, and they merge by moving towards space. For space is certainly greater than all these. Space is their supreme goal. This is the highest and best Udgita. This is endless. One who, knowing this, meditates upon the highest and best Udgita, to him comes the highest and best, and he wins the highest and best region. So let's unpack this a bit. We said that the first element, the first item of the creation is space. Space also includes time, by the way, like the space-time continuum. So space and time are there in the beginning. And then everything else comes out of space, manifests within space, and sets boundaries around itself by defining space, giving it dimensionality and measurement and so forth. So what is the goal of this world? Well, the goal is the origin. This world comes into existence, exists for some time, and then is again reabsorbed into its source. And that source is Brahman. Can't be anything else. So the elements that go to make up this body and basically all the things that we see and experience in the world come from Brahman as space. Space is the first manifestation. Space is the first maya. Because there is no need for space in Brahman itself. There's only need for space in the material creation to house the phenomena of the material world and to give space and time for cause and effect all kinds of phenomena, all kinds of objects, etc. And of course, the most important of all those objects to us is the body, because it's through the body that we experience the results of our activities, karma. Karma in general means work, but it also includes the results of that work. Sometimes people ask me, how can we remember or know about past lives? And the answer is, well, look at your life now. Your life now is the result of those past activities. Maybe you can't remember them, 
but you can certainly see the results. For example, if you're suffering, you know that in your previous life, you did a lot of passionate activities, Rajaguna, because the result of Rajaguna is suffering. This is given in Bhagavad Gita. And if you're enjoying, if you're happy, then you know you did a lot of good things, the mode of goodness, sattva guna, because the result of sattva guna is happiness. So in the same way, we can see even in this life that when we perform passionate activities, it leads to suffering because afterwards one is tired, the vitality of the body is decreased, and even memory and intelligence are struggling after, you know, too much sense enjoyment and like that. So I was just watching a, a tutorial about diet. I have to change my diet for medical reasons. So one of the things they're saying is that if you eat too much sugar, yet you feel wrecked the next day. It's true, isn't it? If you eat a lot of candy or something, huh? Remember when we were kids around Halloween? <laughs> we would each eat way too much candy and get sick. <laughs> so uh, these things should be taken in great moderation if they're taken at all. Because they are the mode of passion. They're in the mode of passion because they generate immediate sense pleasure. But then later on, they're suffering. So we should know that this body is made up of these five elements. It's also made up of these three gunas, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And one of the functions of ignorance is sleep. So we should understand that when we're in deep sleep, sushupti consciousness, this ignorance is covering the fact that we are in naked space. The original element out of which comes everything else. And Vedanta Sutra here says space is Brahman. Why does it say that? Because space is material. The Brahman is pure consciousness. Because when one is conscious of space, one is also conscious of the origin. And the origin is Brahman. Space and Brahman have so many qualities in common that it's really a no-brainer. And in the Tantras, Shiva recommends meditation on space. That's what he does. And that gives great spiritual pleasure and relief from suffering. Why is that? Because again, space is Brahman. There are no perceptions. There is no consciousness, no objects of consciousness in Sushupti consciousness. There is only consciousness itself. So this is Brahman. This is the source of everything. And this is what we have to know to attain complete enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>